Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. Welfare of a city or county is not jeopardized by criminals alone. Nature itself is capable of sudden and unexpected violence that can lead to terror and death. This case started as part of a natural calamity. A gasoline truck skidded on a wet street, hitting a power pole near the city gas works. Sparks exploded the truck and, like a chain reaction, the storage tanks. In a matter of seconds, the entire section was rocked with explosions as flames swept a quarter-mile area of warehouses and tenements. Seventy-two hours later, the combined fire departments of several cities were still struggling to get the flames under control. The death toll and damages were appalling. Look. Just look at that smoke. Did you get the late edition of the paper? Yeah. Three hundred dead so far, more than a hundred still missing. Lots of bodies unidentified. What are the names for that? The list of dead. Oh, right there on page one. Only about twenty identified so far. It's... Ralph's name one of the... No, no, no. All right, he's probably all right. A working square like him would be all right. But he had a job washing dishes in that diner right by the gas tank. The explosion started. Stop there. blubbering. Do you want to draw attention to me? No, but he is my brother. I've got to worry about him, too, don't I? He's probably dead. Yeah. Yeah, he probably is. Your brother, Ralph, is probably one of the unidentified dead. Oh, man. You'll have to go to the emergency headquarters the police have set up in the high school, Bill. If Ralph is dead, you'll have to identify him. If he is there, in with the ones they don't know, there's nothing you can do to help him. But you can help me, Lil. What? What do you mean? If you find him there, baby... What harm can it do if you identify the body but tell the police it's me? Don't you see, baby? It's a chance for me to get in the clear. They'll stop looking for me if they think I'm dead. Now, look, I'll leave town right now, see? I'll let you know where to meet me. Maybe at that resort place we passed near Lake Blue Water. We'll be free, baby. You and me, free from there on. But, but then how? What do we do for money? Well, There's a safe in Landstone I've been itching to get at for a long time. One last safe job, baby, and enough to see us through. From then on, we'll be riding the gravy train. Nobody ever arrests a dead man. Now, get going. All right, then. Good girl. Go on. You're sure your husband isn't at any of the other places where bodies are being held? The city morgue? No. Only the identified ones are there. Are you a teacher at the school here? A detective or what? Well, no, ma'am. My name is Garrett. I'm the district attorney. Keep your hopes up, but don't hope too much for a while. I'll be all right. These are pretty bad cases. I understand. This one seem familiar in any way? No. This one? No. I'm sorry. Very sorry. 
Are you sure? <laughs> that, that ring on his finger. I can't just do it. I know it isn't easy, but try to get a grip. <laughs> I'm all right now. You'd better give me his name for the identification tag. His name... His name is Vance. My husband, Vance Young. Vance Young? Yes. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you a few more questions, Mrs. Young. Would you mind stepping over here into the alcove? I know this is most unpleasant for you at a time like this, Mrs. Young. It's unpleasant for me, too, but I have to ask you. It may be just a similarity of names, but did your husband have a criminal record? Yes. Yes, he did. Did you know he was wanted in several states for burglary, safe-cracking? <laughs> Does that matter? No, he's dead, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to do this, Mrs. Young. You will find several men at desks outside that door at the back of the gym. They'll help you with the funeral arrangements. All right. Thank you. That's Young. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, please. Oh, Chief. No. Hello, Harrington. The mayor and the head of the disaster committee want to see you. Where are they? Riverside Garage. They're converting it into a temporary emergency hospital. Regular hospitals overflowing. You'll be ready for your hospital yourself soon. You look tired. I'm all right. I'll be glad when this is over, though. I hope we never see anything like it again. Yeah. This identification job is the worst of it. Well, I've helped with five today. You stand there with somebody, watch their lives fall apart because of a freak accident. That, uh, that woman I just saw you with, did she find somebody? Yes, her husband. Harrington, the man she identified was Vance Young. Uh, Vance Young? The, the safe cracker? Yes. Was he hiding out in the tenement district? No, she said he had gone to visit a friend at a diner near the gas works just about a half hour before the explosion. Well, I guess the explosion closed our files on him for good. Oh, when you check back to the office tonight, have Miss Miller put out a bulletin to all law enforcement agencies. Take Vance Young off the wanted list. There's no point in looking for a dead man. Sorry, fellas. That's all the breadcrumbs for today. See you for lunch tomorrow. I thought I'd find you up here on the roof. Oh, hello, Miss Miller. I was just feeding the pigeons. The elevator boy told me. Harrington called from the basement garage. He wanted to speak to you. He's on his way up. I... Oh, there he is now. Hello, Harrington. Hi, Chief. You busy? No. What's the matter? Well, I had a stop in at the county sheriff's office a few minutes ago. While I was there, his deputy called in from Landstone. Something he thought we might look into. What? Uh, a safe at the Landstone Mercantile Company was burglarized last night. A payroll job. Watchman was knocked out, but he's been treated, and he's okay now if you want to go out there and question him. Oh, we'd better go right away. The elevator. I'll ring. What was it, Harrington? A safe cracking? Yeah, yeah. Well, at least there's one safe specialist we can eliminate right from scratch on this one. Who? Vance Young. Oh, yes, I'd almost forgotten about him. Dead men don't rob safes, do they? And here's the elevator now. Basement garage, Joe. Well, this is the layout, Chief, according to the deputy's report. Uh, these back rooms are used for storage. He came in through the back, went through that door over there to the general office. That's where the safe is. You want to see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. There it is. Out over there beside the filing cabinets in the corner. Yeah, look, it's Hercules, huh? Mm hmm. Yeah, new model, too. Steel and wrought iron plates and more alarm wires and a police switchboard. 
Yes, but a good safe cracker could divert the alarm circuit without tripping it. Then the box is a cinch because he's got the wire holes to start working on. Take a look. Hmm. All right. Back plate is blown clear off. Doesn't even look like he used a drill. No, small nitro charges in the wire holes, and it was as good as having the combination. Oh, give me a yell for the watchman, will you? Yeah, sure. Hey. Hey, you from the sheriff's office. Yeah, yeah, you. Send that watchman in here, will you? Oh, here's where the circuit was jumped, Harrington. Neat hookup. Mm-hmm. Lab crew take a complete set of photos? They always do. Oh, here comes the watchman. You fellas want to see me? I'm the watchman. Yes, what's your name? Edwin Winkler. Everybody calls me Winky. I, uh, I understand you were knocked out. How's your head? Well, Aspen ain't going to help it any, I tell you. I think you're going to get that fellow that did it? We'll be able to answer that better when all the fingerprints are checked. <laughs> fingerprints? He didn't leave none, I tell you. He's wearing gloves. I saw him. Looks like our best bet is going to be an M.O. check, Harrington. Yeah. M.O. check? What's that? Modus operandi. All people have definite work habits, even criminals. They repeat the same procedure on each job they do. It forms a pattern. Yeah, we've got a pattern here, all right, Chief. Well, I can think of three men suited by that M.O. Three safe crackers whose work we've seen before. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. There's, uh, there's Bert Larkin, uh, but he's still doing time in Folsom for a job he pulled on the coast. Yes, and the other two are Jack Fontaine and Vance Young. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Young is dead. That just leaves us Fontaine. You mean you know who did it with nothing to tell you? An M.O. can be almost as good as fingerprints or a signature. Well, I'll be dinged. <laughs> Maybe that fellow will pay for slug me after all. And for hurt my arm when he grabbed me in the alley out there. You said he grabbed you? Why, yeah. He whipped my arm up behind me. Then jabbed a thumb up behind me or hurt like crazy. I got it a judo trick, Chief. That still fits Fontaine. It fits Vance Young, too. When did the burglar slug you, Winky? After he made me open the back door and let him in. Sneaked up on you before you could draw your gun, huh? Sneaked nothing. That's why I didn't suspicion him at first. He come walking up the alley whistling like somebody taking a shortcut through. I didn't see the mask he was wearing until I lit a match. He asked for lights. See, and then he grabbed me. He got me in here and then beat on me and kicked me. That doesn't sound like Fontaine, Chief. It wasn't Fontaine. He always wears sneakers, comes up on a watchman from behind without a sound. That trick of asking for a match is Vance Young's. Gets the watchman's hands high and away from his gun. But, but, Chief, Vance Young is dead. Maybe yes, maybe no. But I know one thing. We're going to find out. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the living dead man... Here is an important message from our sponsor. And now, back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. Explosions and fire in a natural disaster had destroyed a section of the city, killing more than 300 people. One of the dead had been identified by his wife, who admitted him to be a notorious safecracker wanted by the police. But now, suddenly, we were faced with a crime having all the earmarks of being committed by the man we thought to be dead. I went back to the office and started to check through the records. Here's the information you wanted on Young's wife, Mr. Garrett. Oh, thanks. She gave her name as Lillian Young when she arranged burial with the disaster committee. Did she give an address? Uh, yes, 1310 Morton Avenue. Uh, there's uh, something the police made a notation on, though. What? That ring she said she identified the body by? Yes. Well, the undertaker turned it into the property claims division, but she's never showed up to claim it. No, I don't understand it. I swear to you, Miss Miller, that woman was not putting on an act. She was hurt. Very deeply hurt, and she made that identification. Come in. All right, Chief. 
Well, what'd you find, Harrington? Well, I checked on the tag name on the body. Young's body, or whoever it was. Fire department code showed that it was found in the vicinity of that diner by the gas wicks, all right. That's where the worst ones came from, the heart of that first explosion. All right, here's what we do. Mrs. Young didn't claim the ring she used in identification. Get it from the property section. I'll give you an order. Yeah. Lots of workers who escaped the blast, truckers and people like that, might have eaten at that diner. See if any one of them can remember seeing that ring before. See if they can tell you who owned it. Right. Meanwhile, Miss Miller, I want you to check the Hall of Records. Find out when and where Young and that woman were married. I want her maiden name, where she came from, everything we can get on her. Yes, sir. Where will you be, Chief, when I get finished? I'm going to try the home address Mrs. Young gave. You can follow me out there if you get anything. Now, this was the room, mister. If there was anything they did, I didn't know about it. My wife and I run a respectable place here, and... I'm I... sure you do, Mr. Johnson. I just want to look around. Yeah, well, as I said, they, they didn't leave a thing. They, they only lived here five, six weeks, all told. You get to know the husband very well? To tell the truth, I hardly ever saw him. Come to think of it, I haven't seen him in more than a week since the big fire. He went out one night while that was going on and never did come back. But you say his wife left only yesterday. Yeah, right after the morning mail come. She gave him the keys to the room and packed up and left. After the mail, hmm? You know if she got a letter from anybody? Yeah, but I didn't see who from or where from. She she, she waited for the postman most every morning. I got a house to take care of. Uh, uh, maybe Charlie can tell you where she went. Charlie? Yeah, a cab driver has the hack stand right up in the corner. She called him when she got packed. Oh, there's Charlie's cab now. You can see through the window. He just pulled up. Thanks. I'll talk to him. Yeah, so long. So long. Yes, sir. Where to? What makes you think I want a cab? The <laughs> way I seen you coming to me, I can spot a fair a mile off. Where to? Well, that's up to you. Here or the police station. Oh, cap, eh? What'd I do? Forget to answer the ticket? I'll ask the questions. You pick up a fare yesterday at 1310, the rooming house up the street? Yesterday? Now, let me think. Think yeah. faster. The landlord said you did. A woman named Lillian Young. Okay, so I picked her up. So what? Where'd you take her? Bus depot. You know which bus she took? Oh, no, I don't. But whatever it was, it left 11.5. You're sure of that? I ought to be sure. Almost got a ticket for speeding to get to it. We'd had plenty of time and she didn't make me come dashing back here the first time after we was almost halfway to the depot. Dashing back where? Back to the rooming house? No, no, back to the laundry, the laundry up the street there. I guess she had some stuff in there, although she didn't bring a bundle out with her. Place up the street, huh? That's right. Uh, hop in, I'll drive you up there. Oh, thanks, but there's a friend of mine I can ride with. Hello, Harrington. Come on, hop in. Uh, I was just heading for the rooming house when I spotted you talking to the cabbie. What's up? Young's been missing since the fire. But Mrs. Young checked out yesterday after getting the morning mail. Caught an 11.05 bus. Uh, 11.05. Yeah, that's a northbound, I think. Upstate in the mountain areas. Well, we can check it later. You got anything on the ring? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. A guy who was off duty at the gas works when they blew, he used to eat at that diner. Said the ring belonged to a counterman named Ralph Brenner. He must have been our dead man. And Mrs. Young must have known him to cry the way she did. Oh, she knew him all right. Miss Miller checked on her. Her maiden name was Lillian Brenner. The guy in the diner was her brother. And that's why she was so broken up. And what's our move? The bus depot? No, a laundry up the street. What? Why? Because that's the last place Lillian Young stopped before she left town. <laughs> She was real upset because the things wasn't ready. You know how things was. We're five days behind on our regular work because of the fire. Funny thing, the only one who complained about the laundry being late was Mrs. Young. Maybe that was only because she had to leave town. She, she had taken the stuff with her, finished or not. Hadn't been in the tubs. Well, what did she leave? Oh, just shirts. Her husband's, I guess. 
Real good church, though, the kind you don't have to starch at all. And fancy colors. Well, my old man wouldn't be found dead in some of them. She says she'll be back to pick up the shirts? No, no. She wanted them sent to her COD. Uh, said she needed the money she had on her for traveling. Shirts like that, you'd think her and her man was rolling in money, but... We understand, but did she give you a forwarding address? Yeah, yeah I got it right here in this book. Here, here, here we are. See, she wrote it down herself. Let me see, uh... General, oh, General Delivery Chief, Lake Blue Water. Sure, it's ready now. Uh, they're there on that there shelf up there. I'm going to wrap them and mail them out tonight. We'll save you the trouble. Just wrap them and we'll deliver them for you. Young's Laundry isn't going to get there until we do. There's the road sign now, Chief. Blue water. 25 miles speed limit. Better slow down. Yeah, not that there's any need to. That's mostly for summer. Season's over now. Regular residents turning early. Oh, just the same. It's the law. Yeah. Looks like you're right, though. Main Street's practically deserted. Mm-hmm. Looks like everything's closed up for the night already, except for the movie and the drugstore. Hey, we better find the hotel and turn in. No, I think we'd better drive out of town. Find a motel someplace on the highway. Motels up here aren't much. Mostly cabins with kitchens along the shore of the lake and we can pass town. No, here's the end of town now. I can let her out here a little. No, I won't mind spending the night beside the lake. The air is crisp and fresh. <laughs> By midnight, it'll be crisp and frozen. Here's the lake shore turn-off. I hope we find a place open. We will. Some of the owners must stay on to do post-season repairs. You know, Chief, it's a funny thing about Young's wife remembering his shades even when she was getting ready to run. <laughs> I guess it's force of habit for a woman, huh? Strong thing, habit. Young's safe-cracking habits tipped us that he was still alive. Now, maybe his wife's habits are going to make him wish he were dead again. I think... Stop the car, Hyman. Huh? What is it? What's the matter? I just saw something. Back up. About 50 feet. What was it? Just a flash of something through the trees. Back up. Then I just picked it up as we came past. Hmm. Little road goes down there, that's all. Wooden sign on that tree. Uh, Foster's Cabins. Oh, yeah. See the backs of the cabins down there? It's all dark, though. I see something else, don't you? Put the bright lights on again. Yeah. Wash hanging on the line behind one of the cabins. Look at the two men's shirts on the end of the line. <laughs> Looks like a couple of rainbows even in this light. Hey, hey. That's the kind of color scheme Vance Young goes in for. The shirts we have in the laundry bundle are just like those. You better put out the lights. Don't slam the car door getting out. Let's walk down and have a look at those shirts. Right. You know the laundry mark on the ones we picked up? Yes, four numerals. One, three, one, oh. Same as the address of the rooming house they lived in. Fine, now. Got your flashlight handy? Yeah. Feel it as much as you can. Marks will be inside the collar. There it is. One, three, one, oh. Yeah. Vance? Is that you? Who are you? What do you want? Come on, Harrigan. Vance! I'll run, Mrs. Young. It won't do you any good. Grab her. Vance, it's the police! Where is he? Where? I don't know. I don't know. He's gone. He's not here. He went into town. Down there, Harrington. Oh, where? The boat dock by the lake. I saw a shadow moving. Let her go. We'll pick her up later. There, there he is, Chief. Hurry, he's getting oars out of the boathouse. Stay out of the rowboat, Vance. He's pushing off. I'm going to jump, Bruce. Look out, Harrigan. The oar. Oh, Bruce, you come in. Oh, not as easy, you, you sleep. Look out, he's just got by the lip. I, I can't swim. Oh! He can't swim. He doesn't lie. He can't swim. Bruce, I got you, Junior. Just relax. Yeah. 
Uh, Lot her over here, Harrington. Right. I'll give you a hand. Uh, 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 grab him. Grab him. He's starting to come, too. I got him. Heave. I, I told you I couldn't swim. Well, where you're going, mister, it won't matter. Man, <laughs> look at him. My water's freezing cold. Don't just stand here with it. Well, he's, he's no worse off than I am, lady. No, he isn't, Harrington. As a matter of fact, he's much better off than you are. What's that supposed to mean? You'll see when we get back to our car. At least we have a nice dry shirt waiting for you. Come on, come on. Get over. This is David Bryan again. I hope you've enjoyed this case from the file of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here is the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Having been convicted three times previously for felonies, Vance Young, on this fourth conviction for burglary and assault, was sentenced to life imprisonment as an incorrigible criminal. His wife, Lillian Young, having no previous criminal record, was sentenced to five years in the woman's penitentiary for aiding a criminal, obstructing justice, and willfully giving false information to law enforcement authorities. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. Mm-hmm.